Learn English with the Bible. Leviticus 9 On the eighth day after the time of appointing, Moses called for Aaron and his sons. He also called for the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take a bull calf and a male sheep. There must be nothing wrong with these animals. The calf will be a sin offering. And the male sheep will be a whole burnt offering. Offer these animals to the Lord. Tell the people of Israel, Take a male goat for a sin offering. And take a calf and a lamb for a whole burnt offering. The calf and the lamb must each be one year old. There must be nothing wrong with these animals. Take a bull and a male sheep for fellowship offerings. Take with these animals a grain offering mixed with oil. Offer these things to the Lord. This is because the Lord will appear to you today. So all the people came to the front of the meeting tent. They brought the things Moses had commanded them to bring. And they stood before the Lord. Moses said, You have done what the Lord commanded. So you will see the Lord's glory. Then Moses told Aaron, Go to the altar. There offer sin offerings and whole burnt offerings. Do this to remove your sins and the people's sins, so you will belong to God. Offer the sacrifices for the people. And perform the acts to remove their sins for them, so they will belong to the Lord. Do this as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron went to the altar. He killed the bull calf as a sin offering for himself. Then his sons brought the blood to him. Aaron dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the corners of the altar. Then he poured out the rest of the blood at the bottom of the altar. Aaron took the fat, the kidneys and the best part of the liver from the sin offering. He burned these things on the altar. He did this the way the Lord had commanded Moses. Aaron burned the meat and skin outside the camp. Then Aaron killed the animal for the whole burnt offering. Aaron's sons brought the blood to him and he sprinkled it on all sides of the altar. Aaron's sons gave the pieces and head of the burnt offering to Aaron, and he burned them on the altar. Aaron also washed the inner organs and the legs of the burnt offering, and he burned them on the altar. Then Aaron brought the offering that was for the people. He took the goat of the people's sin offering. He killed and offered the goat of the sin offering. He did this just as he had done the first sin offering. Then Aaron brought the whole burnt offering and offered it. He did it as the Lord had commanded. He also brought the grain offering to the altar. He took a handful of the grain and burned it on the altar. This was in addition to the morning's burnt offering. Aaron also killed the bull and the male sheep. These were the fellowship offerings for the people. Aaron's sons brought the blood from these animals to Aaron. He sprinkled it on all sides of the altar. Aaron's sons also brought to Aaron the fat of the bull and the male sheep. They brought the fat tail and the fat covering the inner organs. They also brought the kidneys and the best part of the liver. Aaron's sons put these fat parts on the breasts of the bull and sheep. Then Aaron burned these fat parts on the altar. He presented the breasts and the right thigh before the Lord as the priest's share of the offering. He did this as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. Aaron had finished offering the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering. Then he stepped down from the altar. Moses and Aaron went into the meeting tent. Then they came out and blessed the people. Then the Lord's glory came to all the people. Fire came out from the Lord. It burned up the burnt offering and fat on the altar. 
When the people saw this, they shouted with joy. They bowed face down on the ground. Leviticus 10 Aaron's sons Nadab and Abihu took their pans for burning incense. They put fire in them and added incense. But they did not use the special fire Moses had commanded them to use. So fire came down from the Lord and destroyed Nadab and Abihu. They died in front of the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord was speaking about when he said, I must be respected as holy by those who come near me before all the people. I must be given honor. So Aaron did not say anything about the death of his sons. Aaron's uncle Uzziel had two sons named Mishael and Elzaphan. Moses said to them, Come here. Pick up your cousins' bodies. Carry them outside the camp away from the front of the holy place. So Miss Hale and Elzaphan obeyed Moses. They carried the bodies of Nadab and Abihu outside the camp. Nadab and Abihu were still wearing the special priest's inner robes. Then Moses spoke to Aaron and his other sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. Moses told them, Don't show any sadness. Don't tear your clothes or leave your hair uncombed. If you do those things, you will die, and the Lord will be angry with all the people. All the people of Israel are your relatives. They may cry loudly about the Lord burning Nadab and Abihu. But you must not even leave the meeting tent. If you go out of the entrance, you will die. This is because the Lord has appointed you to his service. So Aaron, Eleazar, and Ithamar obeyed Moses. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons must not drink wine or beer when you go into the meeting tent. If you do, you will die. This law will continue from now on. You must keep what is holy separate from what is not holy. You must keep what is clean separate from what is unclean. The Lord gave his laws to Moses and Moses gave them to the people. You must teach the people all the laws. Moses talked to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. Moses said, Some of the grain offering is left from the sacrifices offered by fire to the Lord. Eat that part of the grain offering. But do not add yeast to it. Eat it near the altar because it is most holy. The law I gave you says this part belongs to you and your sons. But you must eat it in a holy place. It is part of the offerings made by fire to the Lord. I have been commanded to tell you this. Also you, your sons and daughters may eat the breast and thigh of the fellowship offering. They were presented to the Lord. You must eat them in a clean place. They are your share of the fellowship offerings given by the Israelites. The people must bring the fat from their animals. It is part of the offering made by fire. They must also bring the thigh and the breast of the fellowship offering. These will be presented to the Lord. They will be the regular share of the offerings for you and your children. The Lord has commanded it. Moses looked for the goat of the sin offering, but it had already been burned up. So he became very angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons. He said, You are supposed to eat that goat in a holy place before the Lord. It is most holy. He gave it to you to take away the guilt of the people. The goat was for removing the sins of the people so they will belong to the Lord. You didn't bring the goat's blood inside the holy place. So you are supposed to eat the goat in a holy place, as I commanded. But Aaron said to Moses, Today they brought their sin offering and burnt offering before the Lord. But these terrible things have still happened to me today. 
Do you think the Lord would be any happier if I ate the sin offering today? When Moses heard this, he was satisfied. Leviticus 11 The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. He said, Tell the people of Israel this, These are the land animals you may eat. You may eat any animal that has split hooves completely divided and chews the cud. Some animals only chew the cud or only have split hooves. Don't eat these animals. The camel chews the cud but does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. The rock badger chews the cud but does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit chews the cud but does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. Now the pig has a split hoof that is completely divided. But it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat the meat from these animals. Don't even touch their dead bodies. They are unclean for you. Some animals live in the sea or in a river. If the animal has fins and scales, you may eat it. But some animals live in the sea or in a river and do not have fins and scales. This includes the things that fill the water. And it includes all other things that live in the water. You should hate them. You must not eat any meat from them. Don't even touch their dead bodies. This is because you should hate them. You must hate any animal in the water that does not have fins and scales. Also, some birds should not be eaten. They should be hated. You must not eat any of these birds, eagles, vultures, black vultures, kites, or any kind of falcon. Don't eat any kind of raven, horned owls, screech owls, seagulls, or any kind of hawk. Don't eat little owls, cormorants, great owls, white owls, desert owls, or ospreys. Don't eat storks, any kind of heron, hoopoos, or bats. Don't eat insects that have wings and walk on all four feet. They are also to be hated. But you may eat certain insects that have wings and walk on four feet. You may eat those that have legs with joints above their feet so they can jump. These are the insects you may eat, all kinds of locusts, winged locusts, crickets and grasshoppers. But all other insects that have wings and walk on four feet are hated. Those insects will make you unclean. Anyone who touches the dead body of one of these insects will become unclean until evening. If someone picks up one of these dead insects, he must wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. Some animals have split hooves. But the hooves are not completely divided. And some animals do not chew the cud. They are unclean for you. Anyone who touches the dead body of one of these animals will become unclean. Other animals do not have hooves at all. They walk on their paws. These animals are unclean for you. Anyone who touches the dead body of one of these animals will become unclean. He will be unclean until evening. Anyone who picks up their dead bodies must wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. These animals are unclean for you. These crawling animals are unclean for you, moles, rats, all kinds of great lizards, geckos, crocodiles, lizards, sand reptiles, and chameleons. These crawling animals are unclean for you. Anyone who touches their dead bodies will be unclean until evening. If an unclean animal dies and falls on something, that thing will also become unclean. The animal might fall on a thing made from wood, cloth, leather or rough cloth. It does not matter what the thing was used for. Whatever the animal falls on must be washed with water. It will be unclean until evening. Then it will become clean again. 
The dead, unclean animal might fall into a clay bowl. If it does, anything in the bowl will become unclean. And you must break the bowl. If water from the unclean clay bowl gets on any food, that food will become unclean. If any dead, unclean animal falls on something, that thing becomes unclean. The animal may fall on a clay oven or a clay baking pan. If so, it must be broken into pieces. These things will be unclean. They are unclean for you. A spring or well that collects water will stay clean. But anyone who touches the dead body of any unclean animal will become unclean. A dead, unclean animal might fall on a seed to be planted. That seed is still clean. But you might put water on some seeds. If a dead, unclean animal falls on those seeds, they are unclean for you. Also, an animal which you use for food may die. If it does, anyone who touches its body will be unclean until evening. Anyone who eats meat from this animal's dead body must wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. Anyone who picks up the animal's dead body must wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. Every animal that crawls on the ground is one of the hated animals. It must not be eaten. Anyone who picks up the animal's dead body must wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. You must not eat any of the animals that crawl on the ground. This includes animals that crawl on their stomachs. And it includes animals that walk on all four feet or on many feet. Those are hated animals to you. Do not make yourself unclean by these hated animals. You must not become unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Keep yourselves holy for me because I am holy. Don't make yourselves unclean with these hated, crawling animals. I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. I did it so I could be your God. You must be holy because I am holy. These are the teachings about all of the cattle, birds and other animals on earth. These are the teachings about the animals in the sea. And these are the teachings about the animals that crawl on the ground. These teachings help people know the difference between unclean animals and clean animals. They help people know which animals may be eaten and which ones must not be eaten. Leviticus 12 The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel this, If a woman gives birth to a son, she will become unclean for seven days. This will be like her being unclean during her monthly period. On the eighth day the boy must be circumcised. Then it will be thirty-three days before she becomes clean from her loss of blood. She must not touch anything that is holy. She must not enter the holy place until her time of cleansing is finished. But a woman may give birth to a daughter. Then the mother will be unclean for two weeks. This is like her being unclean during her monthly period. It will be 66 days before she becomes clean from her loss of blood. After she has a son or daughter, she must have a time of cleansing. When it is over, the new mother must bring certain sacrifices to the meeting tent. She must give the priest at the entrance a year-old lamb for a burnt offering. And she must bring a dove or young pigeon for a sin offering. He will offer them before the Lord to make her clean, so she will belong to the Lord again. Then she will be clean from her loss of blood. These are the teachings for a woman who gives birth to a boy or girl. If she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons. One bird will be for a burnt offering and one for a sin offering. In this way the priest will make her clean so she will belong to the Lord again. And she will be clean.